Cadence of Conflict, Asia May 7, 2018. This was a week of talk. A delegation from Washington went to talk with China. Trump talked about talking nice while talking. Economic talking heads are talking about the talks and everybody's talking about it. Once the delegation that went to Beijing to talk gets back, they will talk with Trump. Warren Buffett even had some things to talk about. Trump's delegation to Beijing was indeed an olive branch. It spelled out the line in the sand, toured it, explained it, discussed it, explored it, and made that line very, very clear. To quote Morgan Freeman's Lucius Fox, Mr. Wayne didn't want you to think he was deliberately wasting your time. But the line is not the least bit likely to be respected. China will ignore everything the U.S. delegation explained and forewarned, but they will never be surprised when Trump does exactly what the delegation said he would, though they may act like it. More importantly, the list of expectations show how well Trump knows China and Chinese methods of doing business. Words like retaliate and oppose often surface with disfavor, as well as the U.S. clearly being wise to the tactic of unofficially using backdoor channels to unofficially impose other restrictions to get what one wants. And the U.S. maintains its position on the 301 trade notice that China is a non-market economy, specifically that China is to drop the matter completely and withdraw its appeals on the matter with the WTO. There is no wiggle room in the U.S. demands, and those demands strongly demonstrate that Trump knows exactly the kinds of things China is likely to do. In essence, the list of demands forbids exactly what China is most likely to do in the near future. By contrast, China's demands are mainly that the U.S. back off on its recent action. That's all. Consider the argument going around from pro-China stories about the trade imbalance, especially that U.S. service and consulting help to narrow the trade deficit. The list of Chinese demands don't account for this or ask that they be calculated in the trade deficit. The mere demands in themselves tell us that China does not know what is about to happen in Washington and that Trump knows all too well, probably better than any of his advisors in the White House, what will happen in Beijing. China is in great danger. Surprises are coming somewhere. That's how history always plays out. No war ends without the unexpected, and there's always a joker or two hiding in the deck. The surprises will likely include special and disputed territories, such as Macau, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, as well as international public opinion and some sector of trade or international protocol not yet considered or discussed by anyone, they will surprise everyone. That surprise sector could include ocean boundaries or specific products often traded. It could also be an act of God, such as an earthquake, hurricane, or tsunami. But we have no idea except that an intermediate history student should anticipate at least two surprises before the current cloud passes in the greater storm. China looks at the U.S. the way the poor working class looked at the aristocracy in Russia. Beijing thinks they are demanding what is their right. Remember, this is akin to Opium War III, started by a trade imbalance. China demands that the money and tax payable by way of free technology continue to flow net into China. The U.S. demands things like equal and fair in the flow. That rhetoric is from the opium war prelude. If that war resurfaces, the English-speaking country won't be Britain, though Britain still has a dog in the fight. Hong Kong is not to be changed for 50 years, yet... This week, Hong Kong military youth groups, comparable to Boy Scouts, rejected Chinese requests that they march according to PLA marching steps, meaning that China tried to make a change and Hong Kong 
could become a target for punitive action from China. Hence, Hong Kong is fair play in everyone's opinion, including public opinion about everyone in the game. If China had any kind of conflict with the West, whether militarily or over trade, the conclusion could require complete surrender of Hong Kong back to British rule, and Hong Kongers wouldn't mind. In the territorial disputes, Taiwan declaring independence would certainly rock the boat. Research says Taiwanese overwhelmingly view China as unfriendly, so Taiwanese certainly wouldn't mind making their contribution to making a few waves. China is already on the bench with the Korea issue. Pyongyang just updated the North clocks to no longer be 30 minutes off, but back in time with the South. Where's China? Exchanging trade demands with the country whose trade blockade preceded the Korean talks. In all this, Warren Buffett's advice is that China is a good place for the West to invest. We'll see. That's the cadence of the conflict already seen in the Pacific.